there are ethical issues every day. There are ethical issues, a lot of ethical issues around the, around the clinical trials. And uh, for example, if you have a drug that you're pretty sure is going to work, and you're required, we're required in a number of cases by the FDA to have a placebo group. And you know nobody wants to be in the placebo when we're doing a survival trial. Nobody wants to be in the placebo group. And you know one could question whether it's ethical to even have a placebo group or whether you should just put everyone on the drug and compare it to historical standards, which, is, which of course is not as good an experiment, that's for sure. But these are, these are you know, real folks that, that you're treating. So a lot, of, a lot of our issues around our clinical trials are basically determined by the FDA, where they tell us, look, no placebo control, no approval, no drug for anybody. So we're required in a lot of cases to, and, and we often, often, we sometimes disagree with the FDA on whether we should, it's ethical to have a, a placebo group, but in the end, they're the regulators, and you know, they would rather you know, be really, really sure that you have a drug that makes a difference that you can then market to, to you know, hundreds or thousands or a million people than to, and you know, maybe for some folks not to get the drug early on and to be sure in the end that it's a good drug. So a lot of our ethical issues around, around our clinical trials are determined by the regulatory agencies and we basically just have to follow what they say. Now, in terms of, a, in terms of, uh, of drugs and their, their use in the, in the third world, you know, we wouldn't, um, you know, frankly, uh, we wouldn't try and make a drug for uh, a third world country disease because it's not, uh, it's not profitable. And unfortunately, there are groups like the Gates Foundation now that are putting the, the kind of money into those kinds of uh, clinical development work that uh, you know, are starting to think more about that. But we just don't, uh, you know, we, we can't justify to the people that buy our stock every day that we're going to spend one and a half billion dollars and then give it away. Um, you know, that's it's for better or for worse, and that's not the way the Western world functions nowadays. Um, you know, if it's, if it's free enterprise that's going to determine you know, what drugs are made, um, and it's, it's, a, it's a growth, hopefully, driven business, um, I have to justify at the end that there's some return on the investment that I make. Uh, you know, we do. In the United States, for example, though, it was really a, it was really a bit of a, a fallacy that, that you know, our healthcare system was so, was so terrible. I mean, in terms of prescription drugs, if you have insurance, insurance pays. If you have insurance and you have to, have to make a co-payment, and sometimes on an expensive drug, the co-payment can be more money than someone would have. So if you couldn't afford the co-payment, we paid it. And if you didn't have any insurance and you needed the drug, we just gave people the drug. So somebody wanted to do, uh, 60 Minutes wanted to do a story once on one of our expensive cancer drugs and to find somebody that was dying because they couldn't get the drug and make us look bad. But you know what? They couldn't actually find anyone who wasn't getting the drug. So, you know, and that, drug we have given away, I don't, I don't remember what the number is, a billion dollars worth of, worth of free drug. We, we, um, get, we spend a lot of money every year on co-payment, uh, co-payments for folks. So we believe that at least, in the, at least in the Western world where we operate, that everybody has access to our drugs, um, even if we just give it to them for free.